When I think of the most diverse band in rock, immediately the Swedish band Shocko Messiah comes to mind. Their career, although short-lived, was one of the more interesting of the bunch. Each album differed from the other, but each one was great in their own right. They formed in 1985. We had Tim Skold on bass, Styx Galore on drums, Harry Cody on guitar, and on lead vocals we had Zinni J. Zan. At this time they were known as Kingpin. Their image was overly flamboyant, most likely to break into the glam metal market. And in 1988, they released their debut album, Welcome to Bop City. It was released on the Club Marion Music label in Sweden in 1989, and on the Music for Nations label in the UK. Welcome to Bop City had a lot to offer. It had an interesting set of songs like Don't Care About Nothing, a song about a kid who's fed up being pushed around and told what to do. He's sick of teachers and school and the rules they try to place on him, so he ends up doing whatever he wants because he doesn't care about nothing. Shout It Out is basically the band's anthem. They're telling you what being a rocker is all about. They were born to rock and they've sworn to rock. Another great one is The Explorer. Harry Cody lets loose in this instrumental guitar track. It's shred wankery at its finest. It's a great track. But for me, the best track on this whole album is Nervous, a theatrical horror story type song about a couple that's driven to Lover's Lane to make out. But when they get there, their car runs out of gas. It's the middle of the night, the surroundings are eerie and it starts to freak them out and make them paranoid that someone might be watching them. It's probably the best track on the album actually. Zinni Zan does an excellent job of articulating the panic of the situation with brilliant vocals. It's just excellent. When it came time to break into the American market, they decided on a complete overhaul of the band. Firstly, they decided to rename themselves Shotgun Messiah. Then, the tracks on Welcome to Bop City were tweaked, refined and some tracks were re-recorded to better perfect what they already had. The album was re-released as a self-titled first album simply known as Shotgun Messiah. The last thing to be overhauled was their image. The over-the-top flamboyant femboy glam look was replaced with a more bad boy edgy glam punk image. Big hair, leather and bullet belts and just like that they went from looking like trannies to rock stars. Their image was now over the top in all the right ways, appealing to the rock market at the time. And with the re-released album it ended up charting on the Billboard 200. Shout It Out and Don't Care About Nothing were turned into music videos and shown on MTV, which helped promote the album. It eventually peaked at 99 on the chart, which in my opinion is not a bad position at all for a virtually unknown new band entering a market that was saturated with rock bands. When it came time for a follow up album, Zinni Zan was gone, so Tim Skull took over as vocalist and a guy named Bobby Lycan was brought in to take over bass duties. As a result of this change, and the change that was beginning to happen in the music industry, Shotgun Messiah became a completely hard rock band and released their second album in 1991 titled The Second Coming. The album blew their last out of the water. While Welcome to Bop City was fun and exciting and an all around good album, this one had lots more to offer. The first half of this album was unapologetically about sex, drugs, rock and roll, unfiltered sexual desire. A shocking truth about one's own sanity and a heartless breakup. But as we get deeper into the album, it flips the script on us completely and becomes a more heartfelt album, exposing its insecurities. And it's where my favourite tracks on the album are. I Wanna Know, Ride the Storm and Free are my favourites. The running order of the whole album is perfect. The front cover of the album makes sense. Tim's arms are stretched out in the shape of a cross and his bandmates are behind him. He is God and he has his apostles. This is the second coming. There were two music videos made to promote the album. One for Living Without You and another for Heartbreak Boulevard. Despite it being a great album, it unfortunately didn't do so well in the charts. It only charted for a week and pretty much peaked dead last. It wasn't their fault though. 
the music industry was going through a change at that time. Grunge and boy bands were fast becoming the new thing. Not only that, but Shotgun had to compete with the likes of Nirvana, Michael Jackson, Boys to Men and Whitney Houston. Shotgun was outgunned, but it was a good effort. Next up is their EP, I Want More. It's good, but there isn't really much to say about it. It came out near the end of 92, it has a few good cover tunes like 53rd and 3rd by the Ramones on it, and a few renditions of their own songs on it. It was just something to help pass the time for the fans while they waited on the next album. It's definitely worth a listen, but like I said, it's, there's not really much to say about it. When 1993 came around, it was time to release a new album. At this point in time, there was only Harry Cody and Tim Skull left in the band, and the change in the music industry was making hard rock old news, so they decided to do something drastically different. With the help of Ulef Cybersank, I hope I'm saying that right, Tim Skull and Harry Cody pretty much invented a new genre of music. The album had vocals, guitar, and the rest was made completely from computer technology. Violent New Breed was ahead of its time when it was released. It was one of the first albums to come out with an industrial metal sound. Some people named the genre Megabyte Metal because it was made with computers. Some of my favourite tracks from that album are Sex, Monkey Needs and Side Effects. But my favourite has to be Jihad, a song about a soldier fighting jihadi terrorists who get shot down in Tel Aviv. This album was dark and gritty and had a gothic feel to it. It was brilliant. It had one video for the album title track, Violent New Breed, but it was the end of Shock on Messiah, but the beginning of Tim Skull's solo career. Tim would go on to release many solo albums and would eventually find arena status when he joined Marlon Manson's band as his bass player. Still to this day he's releasing music, and he still kicks ass. From Welcome to Bop City to present day, these artists have gone through quite the change and I find it fascinating. But you're probably thinking, hey man, what about Zinni Zan? Well he deserves a video all his own, and I'll be making that one next, so stay tuned. And thanks for watching this one, appreciate it.